Gundam.TK presents Full Armor Unicorn Gundam. Hey again, everybody, it's Robert184, 2Rs, 2Bs, Gundam.TK, and I'm continuing my look in high definition this time, unlike my old review at the Unicorn Gundam. You've already seen everything from the unbox to the weapons to the Unicorn mode, but now let's turn this guy into destroy mode and reveal some green instead of red. It's hard to believe, I know, but somehow that transformation looks a little bit better in the anime. Anyway, everybody, what's your impression of this? The big difference, of course, being that it's green instead of the pink slash red, and even without the decals on here, I think it looks fantastic. The green and white is a great combination. You wouldn't know how blue would go with that until you see it, and I think it's working just fine. I think that that uh, yellow that I used for the V-fin is just a little bit uh, understated, but then again, maybe the lighter tone might be a little bit better for the green. So overall, I'm very impressed with the way this guy looks, outside of the trouble of getting him there. When you're talking about a solid model, this guy no longer quite fits that bill, although whenever he's feeling a little bit loose, you want to take a look to make sure that he's locked into place here on the back, as well as down in the hips. But overall, he doesn't feel very solid, as you can imagine. Anyway, if you're trying to take a look at the lower body, you can move the skirts up this much, so you can still bring the leg forward, for a kick, the side skirts are not going to get in the way any more than they did before, so you can bring that out for a full side kick if you want to go like that. The knees are going to bend like this and like this, so you're going to get the all-important 90 degrees. Those ankles, remember, are going to move all over the place, even with their high heels. The waist can rotate all the way around if you choose to, as can the arms. They can pivot around here. I'm surprised that part didn't fall off there right there. Anyway, as you move it around, you can see that this part you're going to have to be careful if you push in at all, it's going to get in the way. You can bring the shoulder up and you can bend it out there from the body as you can see, although the white armor is going to get in the way. And yes, he can still reach across and get his finger to the other shoulder again if you're willing to hide his face. Uh, outside of the arm falling off, the head is going to move around pretty well. Just be careful of those V-fins smacking into the uh, back beam savers there and the side of the head falling off. So yes, despite the fact that he may want to fall apart at the drop of a hat, he still is looking pretty sharp, I'd say. Battle damage aside. For height comparison, the Master Grade 00 Riser is certainly not a small Gundam, it's in the regular 18-19 meter range, but you can just see that that Unicorn Gundam just towers above him, especially when you add on the beam sabers and V-fins, but he really gives you the impression of being a tall, slim, stretched out guy. If you want to talk about using a single, different, unique color to its advantage, the Amatsu certainly does that with its gold inner frame. Not to mention the glossy black there, but the Unicorn, again, just looks tall and skinny compared to these kind of filled out bad guys. But this was the one I was looking forward to the most. 1 one hundredth scale on either side here. Master grade and non-grade in this case, I suppose. 1993's V Gundam's Zalidia. Literally half the size it looks compared to the Unicorn Gundam. It looks like he could step on him like a bug. I guess Bandai doesn't intend for you to use the shield when you've got it in destroy mode here, and that's because unless you cut off those parts from the eye thing, which you're not going to have directions for in this full armor instruction manual, you're not going to be able to get the shield on this way. But boy, I think he certainly looks fantastic. Aw shucks, I sound like I'm from the 1920s here. Ring, when you bring out the green, that white part's there. I've cheated a little bit and brought it forward. But the green and the yellow and that blue from the beam magnum, especially there in the rounds, really this guy color-wise is looking fantastic. He's got to beat the red for me. I'd, how about you? In terms of extra things that you can put on, first you can make this extra ammo pack and put that on the back. You could actually use two if you took it out of this beam magnum. You can put the beam magnums on the forearms, although I should warn you that the same thing with this shield here. Everything just attaches on a little bit weaker because you've got that forearm pulled forward which means it's going to have its weakest part forward. So beam rifle on either forearm if you want. You can put the bazooka here on the back and you can also put the shield if you take it off here and work those eye parts around. You could actually have that on the back even open, but don't expect to put two shields on or any more of these. So here he is with the beam rifle stored in the up position. You can either have it up for storage or down for shooting. The bazooka looks good in new Gundam style, and again, that shield is just mighty sharp. 
If you want to put him up elevated, this is just going to show off the weapons and the green even more, or so it would seem. He's got no problem at all looking down the barrel of the beam rifle. With this, he can bring the shield forward. The only thing that you've got to be careful of is A, half the stuff that's open is going to close up whenever you're trying to pose it, but also the hips are going to pop out of place, as is that waist, so the two things that you need to get at, you're going to have to be careful. You're going to take off the backpack and take it off the action base to reposition and fix things up. I'm afraid to even clear my throat here because he might go tumbling over, but with those knees having that 90 degree bend, there's just things that you can do with this guy on the ground that are going to look pretty impressive. You can't quite pull off a full kneeling ground Gundam kind of thing, but if you have him up in the air with his legs locked into place, that's the key. If you can get them all to work and stay in place, you can actually do quite a few things so he's not the brick that I remember. I think it's very easy to forget the beam sabers when you compare that to the awesome power of the beam javelins. These are much taller than the Gundam is, in no matter which form you put it in. But And also, just the uh, color scheme of the psycho frame is just going to sort of change the dynamic of it. Pink beam sabers with a pink slash red psycho frame certainly come into play. You expect them to have one in either hand. With the green, it sort of seems a little bit out of place, but then again, it's traditional Gundam colors and doesn't look bad by a long shot. I don't think Bandai intended you to do this when they give you the four beam sabers, but anyway, with the two in the forearms and two in the hands, you can still get that shield on, although it's going to get even weaker because you bent down that uh, beam saber, which adds a little bit of support. And I don't know why, but I'm just reminded of some of the characters in One Piece when I see this. So on the whole, even though there's a lot more poses that you can do, and you could even go back and add on the Gatling guns, which is something that you've seen before probably, if you've seen the ones that came with the novels, but this guy's going to do a pretty good job of getting where you want to be if you have the patience and you don't mind things falling apart along the way. The 90 degree bends in the legs are greatly appreciated, you can just do more things with them, and if it wasn't for the problems that you've probably seen before of the waist and the uh, legs not staying in place, Otherwise, he's surprisingly good, and the green and the pink, they seem to work. I'm glad that I painted it instead of the seals, but overall, the green looks sharp, but the most important thing is still to come. Yes, you take this Gundam with his Psycho Frame and add in all of these weapons, ridiculous amount as it may be. The only thing we're not going to be doing is putting on the base jabber, but even then it'll have the boosters. So stay tuned for that part, where finally, the one we've all been waiting for is going to be done. So why don't you let me know in the meantime what you think of this a Gundam with his psycho frame out, a green or red for you, and I can't wait to see him brickified with all those weapons. Anyway, everybody, Robert184, Gundam.tk, please hit like if you do and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time, everybody. Bye. I think this guy pulls off the extreme Gundam pose almost better than Gact in high grade does.